priesthood, Hindu family. I was born in a Hindu family to Brahmin priests. My grandfather, my great-grandfather, and my great-great-grandfather were Hindu priests. It was unthinkable and offensive for a daughter of a granddaughter of a priest to come away from that system. I was so hungry for God. I was so thirsty for God. When I was born at the age of, of six days old, I was dedicated to Hindu demons in a cave temple. I was left in a cave temple. And from that moment on, my mind, my spirit, and my soul was overtaken by demonic forces that I had no control over. I could not control these forces. They controlled me. Every decision I made, everything I became. I began to learn to worship the names of over 2,000 gods. Over 2,000 gods by memory. It was required of me. It was required of the priesthood. And I, as an obedient daughter of a priest, or granddaughter of a priest, I learned the names of 2,000 gods. At the age of 19 or 20, I was so hungry for God, but I did not know his name, where he was, who he is. And so I started a journey of pain and darkness. At the age in my late teens, in 1920, I became discipled under a witch. And the reason I went into that was not to harm anyone, but to find God any which way at all. When you're hungry, you get desperate. And when you're desperate, you will do anything to find God. And so I went after him. And I didn't find him in the pages of Hinduism. I didn't find him in the pages of the priesthood creed. I didn't find him in the pages of mantras and prayers that I was taught to believe in. I didn't find him in the, in the rooms of temples huge temples I would go into that and want to look for God there was one time I was in southern India and there was in this temple I went in and I opened the curtain there was a veil that divided the the, uh, the holy area from the rest of the public well I couldn't wait I had no authority to go into that area only a male priest could go in there I opened the curtain and there was a 10 foot idol 12 arms 12 faces myriad number of eyes he didn't see me he couldn't hold me. He had eyes and could not see me. Years down the road, I was struck with a demonic pain in my body. From the top of my head to the tips of my feet, I would be in pain. Painkillers and suicide came the order of the day. I, was, I, I, I took painkillers every day, more than the required dose just to knock myself out. And in my mind, it was one thought. If I ended my life, I would end the pain. And so I was sitting at the edge of my bed, possibly on the last day of my life on this planet. Sometimes when it all looks lonely, you feel that nobody really cares. Hear me, young people. He's watching over you. He's watching over you. And it may not be tangible, but he's over you. And he loves you. And he'll come through for you if you would just focus on him and let the other stuff go. And I was sitting at the edge of my bed, frustrated, fed up. And I cried out like you have cried out. Jesus! I'd heard of that name when I was growing up. Christmas cards. Christian people that would come to my door and tell me he died for you. And I would resist them. And argue with them. Proud and arrogant of the priesthood that I belong to. Ignorant. And when I cried out, Jesus, the presence of a holy God began to filter through that room. That room was darkened. The lights were switched off. I was sitting on the edge of my bed. I never saw his face, but his voice was as audible as anything that I've ever heard before. I am Jesus. I am God. And he touched my body. No doctor could cure the disease that was in my body. No doctor could heal me young men 
No doctor could provide the answers. Nothing out there can. And I've been there, done it, and I've tried it. Everything, the darkest road, I've taken it, gentlemen. And he came to me, he touched my body. In an instant, that disease left my body. In an instant, I was healed. I began to feel his power and his presence course through my body. And then I went into this tiny church, about 50 people, and somebody up in front there looked a bit like this platform, and somebody up on this uh, was talking about going into the water. That if you're baptized, you become a new creature. Well, I didn't understand that either. I was wondering how water can make such a big difference. What's the big deal? We take showers every day. I went up to this preacher man and I said, will you put me in this water? Because everything and anything he wants me to do, I'm ready to do it. He has set me free. He has healed me. Anything and everything. No matter the price. No matter. And so they put me in that water when I came out. Legions of demonic influences broke free from me. And I was set free, church. And today, depression is going to go. Heart disease is going to flee. Jesus is in this house. He's here. And if you can 